Hey YouTube, as I stated earlier uh, in the year here, a few days ago, that I was going to start putting out some videos that have some good meaning to them. And we're there. And I'm going to start today, and I want to tell you guys, uh, we're, we're going to talk about some things in a different way. We're going to talk about things uh, that aren't engineered in Bible college to tell somebody about what's going on in this world. We're just going to sit and I'm going to talk to you. Uh, and the first thing I want to talk about is the biggest search uh, in the history of the earth for a dead body. Isn't that amazing? Uh, if you went on the street and you asked the average guy, well, who, 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 who have they ever searched for their body? Uh, what was the biggest search in a lot? Most people would probably come to Hitler, for example, something like that. And uh, they'd be far off. A lot of effort went into finding Hitler, but nothing <laughs> like all the resources, the worldly resources that went into trying to find Jesus' dead body after it disappeared from the tomb. Uh, there's been some movies on this. There's been four or five movies on this. There's, they've been beautiful movies. Uh, that were uh, come from historical record. One of them is Risen, uh, of course, a Roman uh, uh, centurion did not follow through with the apostles and actually live with them. None of the apostles wrote on what was actually going on with them. Uh, so, so we know there was some dramatic things taken in that. Uh, there's another movie. It may have been a Cecil B. DeMille movie. Uh, and he did, if I'm not mistaken, The Ten Commandments, uh, which was beautifully done uh, and biblically done. Uh, it wasn't far-fetched. Uh, and then there's been some bad movies like these uh, Kings and Gods, or Gods and Kings, I forget, with that Fruit Loop from Ireland or the UK. I can't remember his name either. Pretty good actor, but complete nutcase uh, that did that movie the, the, the new movie on the Exodus and that was just totally uh, butchered and I'll tell you why it was butchered it was butchered because it was created uh, by the descendants of the same people that uh, went after Christ those people didn't believe Christ attacked them yes Jewish people Jewish preachers from the Jewish synagogue and Christ was totally against them. He called them out for what they were. He told them, you are of your father, the devil. Uh, he, he also uh, at one point said, I did not come for you. I came for the sick and the afflicted. And they had all the worldly stuff. Not much of a change today, is it now? They just say Christ, but they're sitting up there making the rules up as they go. God's only talking to them. Uh, can't can't be with the normal man. They got to be up there in the beautiful castle. No different than them cats, them rabbis, back in Jesus' time. And the point I'm trying to make to you is nothing changes. Nothing. Nothing has changed. Technology is a little different. Uh, what has technology done? Has it made you bigger, stronger, faster, more intelligent? No, it's made you dumber, weaker, and slower. That's exactly what it's done. It's done that to all of us. Uh, so, 
So, I want to talk about the manhunt. They never found that body, and they never found that body. Now, let's go into what they did to try to find the body. Uh, and they didn't do this to try to find Hitler or any of these war criminals or people, these other things in history. Uh, but they did in this case. They had to find that body. They had to find that body. That body, uh, if not found, would spark into what it sparked into. And they went into a lot of tombs. Uh, we would call them maybe mausoleum crypts today, above ground tombs. They went into the pits where they were actually burning bodies uh, and pulling bodies out of the burning pits and getting burned themselves, trying to find that body. Trying to say, this guy did not rise from the dead, but oh boy, he did. He did. And there are many, many historical accounts of it. Historians wrote about it. Just go look. Go find something out before you discount a story. Well, I don't think Noah's flood that matters. No. Uh, would you go look at the science behind it? Do you not even care enough about your very soul? to go investigate it and look at both sides. There's a reason why that Richard Dawkins guy who is melting in front of you right now, by the way, doesn't want uh, any other concept other than evolution and the Big Bang Theory taught in schools. And I'm here to contest that the world is just 6,000 years old. Uh, I'm not here to contest anything. I'm just here to tell you the truth that it is. That a worldwide flood did happen. That there were giants on the earth wreaking havoc. Uh, this is what took the dinosaurs out. And later on, I'll probably be doing some videos on the length of life, the science behind it, what was going on with carbon in the world, uh, how the flood happened, what did it do, and all of the natural sciences, all of the natural sciences points to biblical correctness. And all of the worldly science points to a satanic religious cult thing. The Bible had a word for it. Science, falsely so-called. Yeah. The Bible was telling us about everything. So, think about that. Go look at that. We'll, we'll start at God Rose from the Dead here this year. We'll start with that. Uh, biggest manhunt. All of uh, uh, a huge portion of the uh, might and the financial strength of the Roman Empire was put into, and the might and the strength which was greater in the area of the temple church where all the money changing was going on. It's where all the rich folk were taking advantage of the poor. Nothing's changed that's going on today. The enemies of the Lord are the same people that they were 2,000 years ago, that they were 4,000 years ago. Uh, there's, the enemies of the Lord is led by the same force that messed up Adam and Eve. Nothing has changed. It's all the same. So, just want food for thought and get you thinking about these things. Uh, 
I, I want to try to end these videos with letting you know you are in a war. And I, I want to tell you that war is physical, is physical, is physical, is physical, and it is spiritual. It's a war from the taste buds on your tongue to the smells in your nostrils to the pleasing of your ears and your hands and your body to the very soul inside of you to the emotions that drive you to get angry, to be happy, to be sad. A, a war and that's why we're fighting men up in this house should it surprise you any that <laughs> that we would be combat 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 uh, learn 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 and I want to tell you something else you can look up the go read the book The Art of War let me tell you all something. Nobody will dispute this, by the way. This is undisputable. Undisputable. Just listen to me. Uh, in all of recorded history, the side that has won the war has wrote the history book. They have wrote it and that's the message that gets out. Only the winners, the losers have never been able to do that. Well folks, let me show you who has won all the way up to the ending of this earth. Who has won the battle? the only book that has the complete history of the earth, the Holy Bible. This is it. See? This is it. So you be thinking again who you think who's won this thing. This battle was won before day one. Some things we don't need to think about because we can't wrap our heads around it. But Timothy told us this. He said, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life for unto thou art also called. And haste professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God who quicketh all things and before Jesus who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession. So fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life wherein to you are also called and haste professed a good profession before many witnesses. Quickness. Haste means rapid. And haste to do good. Haste to be on the good side. Haste to combat evil always produces good things. Don't ever think it don't. You sat back and you conform to this world. You sat back and Oh, it's okay in my sport. And it's, you know, I don't want to say nothing. Uh, on an interview here, this might take it too far. I'm going to tell you something. Up in this house, we're going to take it past any limit. To, to set a limit, we're going to pass it. Put up the barricade, we're going to bust it down. Build the wall, we'll, we'll tear it down. That's what we're going to do. What are you going to do? 